Sonic Omens. A game with the ties. And it's lows. And then the stupid sword slashes come in. And now I'm dead! When I started this review, I literally had no idea what type of fan game I'd be playing. Since recently, I just finished playing the Wonder Project that was Project 06. I also had a feeling that I wanted to play a Sonic game since we know Frontiers isn't coming for a long time. But this game is very different from most other fan games, especially within the team behind it. Yeah, there's no beating around the bush. This team had a bit of a controversy. Oh dear god! They seriously put a paywall for this. They stole music from Cars to the video game! Ew! Dude! What the fuck? Да блять, заебало все, я не могу больше. Все, хватит. Так, ребята, давайте, давайте. Просто. You know, I can't even be mad at him. That, that boss fight took like too. All right, ignoring outside drama, let's get into how I actually feel about the game. First off, let's talk about the action stages, or mainly the stages you play as as Sonic. Dear God, this is a beautiful first level. The running on water is so much fun. Swinging from the hooks has always felt so clean. The music itself is just so fun and I just enjoy this level so much. I'd even go as to say this could rival modern Sonic stages and the good ones. This was just a really well crafted level and it's just simply pure bliss to keep going around and I like to come back to this level in case I was having a hard time with other parts of this game. Sonic's movement is actually very interesting in this game. You have his normal boost, but you also get to this grapple mechanic that just swings him around. Kind of like forces his grapple mechanic, but a lot more visually appealing. He also has his roll and other classic moves that you've seen through like things such as Sonic Generation. But there's one that I have to talk about. The Light Speed Dash. Okay, listen. I get what this game wants from it, but god is this move just so situational. I tried to use this as many times and it just doesn't work. I'll try to use it before I can, but I have to make a complete stop and then start charging, which already the charge takes so long. Doing this is also a huge momentum killer since you are forced not only to stop but to start a charge up that is very long. Genuinely aggravating it is to attempt to land the damn thing since if you're lucky, you are still wasting a huge amount of your time just attempting to hit a few robots that could be solved by the boosting or just using a homing attack. I'm done praising this game nonstop, but this is where things slowly drain in terms of fun. And fast. Wild Ridge is next, and it's the first Tails Lizard. And oh my god! You know, I was actually just thinking of skipping over these sections of the game, but no. You all have to hear about how unbelievably stupid this level design is. First of all, I am at a hard disadvantage to most people who are playing this game because this game's controls were well optimized for something like a Xbox controller. Guess who don't got an Xbox controller? So I had to get the closest thing, the fucking Steam controller. This thing has a touchpad right stick you know how god awful it is to move the camera with this thing it is like pulling teeth don't get me started with its dinky little analog stick and its weird shape and its awful feeling the buttons are fine i guess and this is before we talk about the level design moving around is would probably be hard enough if i was given open space but unfortunately the tails parts are probably the most claustrophobic parts of the game. You can attempt to do anything, and if you get hit once, your HP is halved. Which means, uh-oh, you got put in a little bit of a combo, you get 1-2 Chris Brown Rihanna style, get sent into the fucking Shadow Realm. It's so bad. You end up just dying in two hits 
because you didn't dodge perfect level design. Moving the damn thing is already hard enough and it shows in certain parts of the footage that I genuinely try to move, but it just does not work. All in all, I guess these levels are fine, but I genuinely do not have any fun in doing them. But we can agree that we're just gonna ignore the tail levels. Anyways, moving on from that hellhole, uh, we could go to White Jungle. This level is fun and all, but it doesn't make sense. In Sonic Adventure 2, this whole island just blows up because of Eggman. How the hell is this level design so similar if the story is an aftermath, which, by the way, I've been ignoring this plot and don't worry, we'll get there. But, <laughs> but all in all, this level is fun, but it's not that different from the level from Sonic Adventure 2. After skipping a specific stage, we get a waterfall section. Not gonna lie, the stage is just a quick segment of running around and dodging stuff, so there's not much to talk about. But after that, we'll be we getting a huge change in pace. Okay, so remember when I was complaining about the Tails levels and how my controller made it a lot harder? Well, this gets up a bit when talking about Shadow, since not only do you have a whole new set of abilities, ranging from useless to situational to the only form of damage to the one you're using, but it's never gonna work. Add that with the already hard camera controls and you get one of the most painful aiming sections that I've ever had to sit through. Alas, the level continues and, well, it's similar to Sonic stages, but adds sections that require Shadow's ability gimmicks. Now we move on to Moldy Jungle. This stage also suffers from having a lot of gimmick sections and some pretty boring sections, but all in all, it's not too bad. Then after this is United Railroad. Ah, this stage can be so painful! Sadly, I did this level as a re-recording, so a lot of the stuff I hated about it were lost since I remembered a lot of the cheap shots that this level throws in you. However, this does not mean there are not cheap shots that you can't avoid! First of all, there's a be all the enemies to proceed part that's just annoying since Chaos Blast doesn't even kill everyone because of how big the arena is. Secondly, the part right after you has you do Chaos Dash to jump up these huge blocks. Well, like I explained, using this move is hell on earth and I just got lucky in the recording because any other attempt off recording was me just raging at the fact that you have to jump a specific way in order to do the dash right? Then right after, there's this stupid section where you have to dodge a billboard, but they move so damn fast compared to Shadow, you can never dodge them! You just hold boost and pray to god you make it! And after that is a whole line of train cars that have these huge weights that screw you over every time. So I hope you weren't planning on a ring bonus. And the worst part has got to be when they bring back the billboard mechanic. Then they make it faster and there's more of them. Finally, if you get to the end, there's a cutscene and then the level ends. Thankfully, this is the last action shadow stage, so... We can go back to Sonic now. And what's his first stage factor when it comes to action stage? No, the Citadel of Lotus. So ass! You start with bringing in the worst enemies in the game. I'm just gonna call them the Lightning Shitlets. They all swarm you. They go invincible and hit you regardless of how far you are. The way you beat them is with the light speed dash, and I would. If I had time, the damn startup is so slow by the time you're even close, you have either died or have been hit. Next, you travel through these creative but still dumb wall sections, which takes you to more of these fuckers. And beyond that hell is a cutscene mid-level, which means absolutely nothing as far as I'm concerned. Later, after some actual fun design, you get to a water section, which can be skipped so easily but watch out for these suicide drones that will hit you regardless of what you are. This is somehow worse than the lightning shit list because these things actually track you. If you survive, you get more wall stuff, which leads you to a cool but super clunky part of platforming on moving walls. I don't know man, it's cool until you, you're you put in a weird position and then you're just screwed. Unless you're me in this recording and just got super lucky. 
but only after all that clunky mess, you get more wall sections that sent you into more of the electro shitlets, which are just a run killer. And somehow, oddly enough, this was the only time I got to pull off the stupid light speed dash, and it saved, I don't know, a minute or less? It's just so bad. Only after that hell do you go along the dumbest wall section since it's all RNG if you either get hit once and die and the progress in the level just gets swooshed back or you just boost and luckily you don't get hit by anything that's just going to crash you into the wall. But thankfully all that's left is just breaking down some walls with homing attacks and a good boost and you're done with this. Thank God. But I've been holding a special part of this back. And that's because we need to talk about the bosses. In order to understand the bosses, you need to understand the story. Oh my God, this story is goofy as hell. What is this? Okay, I'm just gonna give you a really short summaries of what's going on just so you can understand why these bosses happen. But, Trust me, the story is so bad, it doesn't, you don't need to know it. The first boss is actually pretty simple, and seems to be the m closest to how a real Sonic game would be. Sonic and Tails hear about Eggman doing some bad stuff, they decide that, yeah, let's go find him. And they see that there's sensors at a s old Eggman lair. They decide to go investigate there, thinking Eggman is trying to reset his base. After some gameplay, you realize that he's not there at all. They they mess around, Tails realizes that he just screwed everyone over, and the Egg Dragoon comes back. This is a boss that's used in other Sonic games, but it's nice to see a rusted version, which helps explain why this boss will be much easier. Now to the actual boss fight, it's piss easy. You just run around and homing attack it, but it gets a pass since it's the first boss and the story gives it good reasoning to why it's so simple. Okay, so the next boss fight is a Tails boss fight, and I think we can all agree that we don't want to talk about the Tails boss fight. I also didn't record it because I didn't want to do it, so yeah, basically they find in a computer that Eggman's at some base, they go, they go track Eggman down, realize that he's in a gun facility, so they decide to do trespassing while listening to the Cars 2 soundtrack. Jeez. I'm still gonna keep bringing that up. Why the hell did they steal from the Cars 2 soundtrack? And they find him. He has an emerald, but I guess he was too busy fucking around and he found out that there's these things called omens that just smacks him out of the scene. What are omens? Basically these guardians of the emeralds, but they're, it's just a plot point. Just ignore him. The next boss involves Shadow and his missions. This comes after Boldy Jungle, and basically all you need to know is that Shadow's here too, he's working for Gun, and he's being helped by Exiled. Who was Exiled? Doesn't matter, we'll know about him later. So Exiled is just here now, and Shadow's also here, so he just says, okay, I'm gonna go stop Eggman, I guess, because that's what y'all want. And then they also told him to stop Sonic, but I guess he just really just would do it regardless. But... After trying to find Eggman in Moldy Jungle, he realizes that he accidentally stumbled onto a trap and now has to fight Vortex. This boss is difficult, but this is probably the best boss fight in the entire game since it's actually just really fun since it cuts off into different sections. However, it's not that difficult when compared to the rest of the game, but still, it's a fun boss, I guess. The next boss fight is just painful to explain. A lot of just stupid plot points and just odd writing choices leads to Shadow betraying Sonic and joining Exiled in order to apparently get yeah, his wish. What his wish is, is to stop thinking about Maria? Again, this is a weird plot point that is just never explained. He just randomly starts getting visions of her and just wants him to stop. And Exile's plan? Create a Maria that's just constantly in pain. And forces him to fight it. Jesus Christ. Alright, going to the Maria fight. 
Um, in this recording, I actually, I actually figured out a strategy to beat it. It's just building up Chaos Blast and just spamming it when there's that huge barrage. However, some people didn't know that. And when I mean some people, nobody knew that. And I think Eggman's voice actor for this game sums up how this boss fight properly felt for everyone else beautifully. Alright, I took a couple days off from making this part of the video because it's just so infuriating that I thought maybe if I sat on it for a couple days, I wouldn't hate it as much. But you know what? To be fair, after all omens is, I could have looked past it all, but the final boss. Jesus Christ, I don't even care about the story. Fuck the story. Let's talk about the final boss. Ah! Jesus Christ, this is the worst boss fight of all gaming. This is no exaggeration. I have never had any less fun in my life within a boss fight. Just listen to my life reaction of fighting this damn thing. Oh, not the laser. Go. There's no way to outrun it. Oh, and then the stupid sword slashes come in. And now I'm dead. Whee! Surely the rest of my MC attack won't be as like dog shit, right? It'll actually be fun, right? Yeah. Nope. Back to the stupid sword slime. Which are unblockable and unvincible enemies! Just hit me already. Great. That, all that effort's gone. And now we have to start over! Alright. Sonic Come on! Yeah! Finally! First of all, Let's talk about his lightning attacks, which, guess what, are a part of all of his attacks. Which means they will exactly, one, hit you, and two, take all of your energy, which prevents you from turning supersonic, which basically nullifies you and causes you to just be softlocked until you die. There is absolutely no exaggeration. That is the boss fight, and that is part one. After a while, he sends the lightning shitless back! And then you have to kill them. But remember, the bad part is that they turn invincible, making them impossible to kill, right? So now, you're getting hit, losing all your energy, because all of these are lightning attacks, which means all your energy is going away. And that means that when you try to get your energy back, you have no ring, since this is a small arena, and then you're dead again. I've seen multiple people fight this, and they act like it's nothing, but genuinely, I have never hated a boss fight in any game such as Sonic Omens, let alone a Sonic game in general. I will stand by this claim that this is the dumbest fight ever. And part two of the fight, I was nearly crapping myself thinking, great, now I'm gonna die and start at the beginning. But luckily, when you get to part two, it is so undeniably boring that you end up winning just by mashing A. It just where? What happened? What happened to Chow Paradise? That was like the greatest part of the story. What? What happened? What happened to Chow Paradise? And how it felt like a passion project where it felt fun. Row 99. Hell, some of the Tails missions were more enjoyable. Shadow was unique at some point, even if it's a hard gimmick. But in the end, the game just ends off with stupid plot points like Sonic crying over Chip, even though Chip serves little to no relevance until the end. Next, I guess Sonic just brings back the Chaos Emerald somehow, and then after talking to Eggman through heart to heart, he pulls off a cliffhanger? No, this game's not getting a sequel! So, anyways, that's Sonic Omens, and... <laughs> okay. Well, 
honestly, my entire review of this game is just, it's kind of bad, but realistically, it's not just about Sonic Gomans at this point. It's about Spark the Electric Jester, baby! Woo! Go play that game and not this dog shit fan game! Go play a real franchise that's one, better, and two, is actually not behind a paywall!